Hey you. Hey what? Not you, <laughs> you. What's that? It's time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. I know that, silly. How do you know that? I'm soaking in it. Time for economic phase sequence. Midway through the first round of the turn, Sunny and, no, the first turn of the round, and Sunny and Betty Crocker have both moved. We're seeing some movement towards their kind of mutual border here, this, this sort of white string that kind of cuts off the, the area that they've both um, laid claim to. Sunny actually has colonies there. Betty Crocker's working on it, um, but sending forces from the home planet where he has a bunch of shipyards that way. Where Sunny already has some uh, buildup, he has put together the bringers of pain. You want to see the bringers of pain? It's this guy, which is a destroyer. And this guy, oh, it's his flagship, the Victory. And this one, it's a scout. I don't know if that's a special scout or not. That might be his special scout, but it might not be. Um, so we'll see if anyone makes a move. Sonny could probably press forward and do something, but he kind of wants to keep these borders and keep his area and just keep building off there. That's what he's going for. Uh, Betty Crocker's not for sure that that's what he's going for, though, so he's sending forces that way. Feels pretty good about um, the upper part of the map. There's a, there's a ways for Junior to, to puncture through if he's going to threaten. Uh, Betty Crocker's colonies up here and Junior spread pretty thin kind of trying to branch out to both sides a lot of space there a lot of space Overall, it's been a fairly quiet round of turns. Um, Junior found a lot of asteroids lost a scout um, Betty Crocker for his part has started to he has uh, exploration technology he got that during the last economic phase sequence and um, has been has been sort of starting to kind of delve into this area, but he doesn't want to reveal things too soon because his thing that he's using to explore is also sort of his uh, his thing that's keeping Sunny back. Um, his his frontier fleet, these two here, which he feels like seems kind of impressive. Other than that, it's mainly been people shifting around. Sonny hasn't been too, doing too much, just kind of keeping to his borders. Um, the other two have been doing some exploration, more so Junior than Betty Crocker. Betty Crocker's just been moving his people towards his frontier here. He's got a, you know, a lot of space he's dealing with. He needs to get a pipeline going, I think, in order to facilitate quicker travel in there. But also some mining happened. I neglected to fully do this exploration here during Sonny's last turn. So we're going to go back in time and he has to fight for the planet Abydos. Well, he's not fighting for the planet, but he went there and explored and it turned out there were four alien ships there. Um, it's not going to be a very even fight, but it's our first combat. So that's interesting uh, in that. So. We have four alien ships. Their attack is six each. They each ended up with six attack and two defense versus SC3, who... The sunny ship, yeah. It's skilled, so I'll have to see what that actually does to the fact that it's skilled, but I don't think it's gonna be, its skill is gonna be enough to take on these alien ships, but we'll see. Maybe he can survive around and then retreat. Okay, so how it works is we're going to take seven. They get a bonus of plus one since there's more than double alien ships than there is uh, Sonny's experienced scout. And they get to fire first because they're B and he's E and B is earlier in alphabetical order. And if they get seven or less, then they score a hit, which will kill him. So we're going to roll four times and it will be truly a miracle if... This experienced scout, this skilled scout, who survived a black hole, survives this onslaught of alien oh, laser fire. We're going to say these aliens use lasers. Um, oh, he survived that one. That's one. 
He survived that one, that's two. <gasps> this is truly a blessed ship. This is God's ship. We're not gonna count that, it went off the table. Though it would have been a seven. Nine, oh, one more roll. And six, alas, Sonny's skilled scout gave a good fight, but he joins his friends in the abyss. So that's a strong force, way out of Sonny's league right now, or way out of any player's league, I, I think. I don't, I don't know that anyone would feel comfortable taking on those four alien ships with their 6-2 rating. Um, but there's a couple reasons why it might be in Sonny's interest to try to go that route. One, if he is able to destroy these ships and colonize this planet, Abydos, then he gets an alien technology card. And alien technology cards give you something like colonies will produce 5 CP this economic phase. They instead produce 6 CP. So that's very great because for each colony you have that's fully grown, which is the 5 CP state, you get an additional CP, and CP is the money of the game. Soylent Purple. Scouts and DD pay half maintenance, round it down. That would be great. So if they, if their maintenance would normally be one, which I think, I don't know why their maintenance would be higher than one. I guess if you have a giant race, then you have bigger ships, and then you have to pay more maintenance then instead they would be zero. So that's good, that's kind of the, that gives you a similar advantage to what uh, Betty Crocker has right now, because it's insects um, pay zero maintenance on those ships because their hull is one, and insects have one subtracted from their hull, which makes their hull zero, and maintenance is based on the hull size. So there's that reason. There's also the reason they'd get the colony. So also, he has some sort of, um, he can kind of take, take over this bottleneck here. You see there's this one nice blue space, which tends to be good, right? We've established that the colored spaces tend to be more um, benevolent than the white spaces. Um, and also, strategically, this bottleneck's important because there's a supernova here. And this supernova just lasts for the entire game. So you can't go in this hex. So kind of the way through here, if you're not going to take the nebula, which is slower going, is right here. And so that's kind of like the path there. There's some talking for you. Just finished the first round of turns uh, in turn six, and Sonny's pretty much already done. He was the last person to move. And by done, I mean he's done moving for the round. <laughs> he's done pretty much everything he could do during the last... Um, economic phase sequence, he spent most of his money on bases. So he has bases all here. He's pretty well defended. Um, he has his bringers of pain there, which is his special team. Da 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 da, bringers of pain. Da, 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 da. All right, um, and what else has been going on? Well, Betty Crocker's moving his forces this way to kind of be there, Junior. Lost uh, some people due to alien ships. Betty Crocker's uh, really starting to explore. He's the only person with exploration technology, so he's using his um, cruisers uh, to, to kind of fill in this area. And he that, that should do well for him if someone doesn't hit him soon. The seventh round of turns uh, proceeded in somewhat of a lopsided manner. So we saw mainly a lot of stagnancy and build up here in Sonny's patch. He's basically just moved ships to his bringers of pain um, group here. Got, has some destroyers, the victory, um, battle cruisers, which are new uh, to the game, and a scout. So he, he built up there, really just kind of sitting tight, collecting things. Um, maybe he wants to consider start doing some exploration as well, but he's so worried about the frontier fleet that uh, Betty Crocker also has right at his gate that he's just kind of making things tougher. Built some shipyards too during his last turn, so he's going to start really producing a lot of ships and maybe press forward. We'll see. 
there's kind of a, a build-up race going on there. But before I talk about Betty Crocker, let's talk about Junior. Junior's been doing some build-up of his own, uh, trying to build up a fleet so he can take this planet uh, and get the technology there in another colony. Uh, did some other kind of infrastructure stuff, a lot of mining. He had a good mining turn, 20 worth, and there's still a lot of minerals out in his field. But um, he's kind of in the same boat as Sonny, where he needs to do some more exploration of these white areas in order to kind of fill out what he has. Luckily, he doesn't have to worry so much about Betty Crocker being right at his gate, though Betty Crocker could start pushing up if he wanted to. Um, but there's quite a bit stacked here, so it would be... Not, not maybe the wisest choice for Betty Crocker right now, especially since he's also contending with Sonny over here. Uh, Betty Crocker, he's been using his exploration abilities to great avail. He's actually looked at all three of these. I play that, I don't know what the rules say about this, but you don't have to turn them up if you don't want to. So he's keeping them secret, but I will tell you this is essentially a wall here, so he can't really move over to this area yet unless he wants to put himself in danger. Um, but he did find another colony here in Vega, founded a colony here, getting his MS pipeline completely connected all the way through here to his home planet, uh, as well as through here. Found two space wrecks, so once he gets those in, he's going to get quite a bit of a technology jump. And his technology's looking the best right now, I think, overall, so that, that will only help him further. Um, Hard to say who's a clear leader at this point. Uh, Sonny, I think, is is pro has a good production going, whereas uh, Betty Crocker's making the best use of his area. Um, board position-wise, Junior's got an interesting position just in that he's further away from everyone else, so he doesn't have to worry about that. And if he can capitalize on that advantage, uh, he might be in a better spot as well. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the economic phase solo, uh, without filming it because that would not be that would be a very long uh, process of me writing and figuring things out and counting but I will I'm gonna I'm gonna show you the sheet uh, coming up here so you can kind of see what people are working on uh, after they have worked on it all right so let's just take a look at their production sheets here there's I made an error with Sunny where I think I forgot to make purchases one round that's what comes from uh, scattering about your play. So this is going to look a little weird here, but let's just focus on number seven. And actually, first I want to talk about, there's 20 on the sheet here. I wonder if games typically, and actually I assume games typically go much quicker than what I'm doing. I, I tend to like to just kind of explore personally in games like this and don't oftentimes rush for the victory, even though... I guess that's not the most efficient way. Um, I guess you're, through through competition, you're supposed to be trying to get each other as quick as possible. If I I were playing the game, I'd probably be more interested in just researching things and uh, playing around with the universe. Um, not that you really play around with the universe, but exploring and that kind of thing would be would be fun for me. So I think that that definitely spills over into the way that I'm playing these fellows, and also my understanding of the game is changing as I play. Right. Um, didn't do a lot of forethought, just kind of jumped in with both feet. So we're at eight here. I doubt we're gonna be done by 20. I really don't, especially since I have kind of a longer end condition than is typical, but that's all right. So let's take a look at where Sonny is at. I guess first, let's do a, a comparison between colony CPs. CPs is the money here. So we see that Sonny's making the most, then Betty Crocker, then Junior last. Um, that's going to be changing for Betty Crocker. He has two colonies that are approaching maturity that aren't mature yet. And he should be able to get a colony, one, two, three, here um, by next turn. So he's going to be making the most from colonies coming up. Um, then industrial centers, that's their other main way of getting money. Sonny has the most of that. But Betty Crocker is pretty close. So eventually Betty Crocker is going to be making the most. And he also, I think, researches the most. If we look at the, the RPs here, um, Sonny's pulling in 10 a turn. Uh, same with Junior. And I believe Betty Crocker is, pulling in, is going to be pulling in 20 after this next turn. All right, so there's just kind of an overview on how people are doing that too different in terms of points, but Junior's a bit behind overall. Um, okay, so now looking here, 
You can see what purchases they made. Now, actually, let's look at his technology first because that's going to give the purchases a different light. They've started to diversify more in what they're going for. Um, the first part, we're, we're kind of past, past the whole exploration boom, although there's a lot left to be explored. Um, maybe kind of prematurely exited that phase. But they're also starting to kind of um, emphasize certain areas over others. So Sonny's big thing, uh, first it was defense. He was going to defend himself. He even got security, which is useful. Someone's trying to board your ship. Um, that's, no one's researched boarding yet, but he doesn't know that. So then the big buildup started happening over here. And so he's, he's really just going for ship size. He's bumping up a ship size every turn and then buying as much of that size ship. Going to go to Titans. This is his long-term plan. He's going to go to Titans, which is the seven size, the biggest ship, kind of like um, a Death Star kind of thing. And then probably get fighters because you can put fighters on the Titans. And then continue working on defensive stuff like point defense. I think he'll probably get in minesweepers and scanners, just kind of the countermeasures. So point defense is kind of the countermeasure to fighters. Scanners is the counter defense to cloaking, and minesweepers are the counter defense to mines. So, what did he buy? He bought some scouts, kind of saw that. I mean, Buddy Crocker's been exploring for a while, uh, just through his, his sensors, but the others didn't know that he was doing that. He just started turning up uh, tiles again, and in the, the white area, oh, that's a blue one, um, in the white area, Vega's a white planet. No, that's a yellow one. Well, he started turning, oh, here, here he turned up a white. He started turning up white ones. And so Sonny and Junior both kind of got the message that they should get some more scouts going or they're going to fall behind because they can all see what um, Betty Crocker's resource capability is. So he bought a couple st scouts um, and then some, what are those called? Battleships, I think. Battleships. And battleships are pretty tough. I think they might even be hull three. If we look here, we can see, I'm, I'm being way too blabbery about this. Yeah, hull size three. So they're, they're a tough ship. The first three size hull that we got other than their um, special ship that they start the game with. All right, so that's where Sunny is. Focusing on being big and tough. Then we go to Junior here. Junior got his ship size up to three as well. Focusing more on attack. The reason why, and this is going to be kind of a theme for him, he's focusing on attack because he's fearless. So he he gets a big advantage in the first round of combat, um, but he's not able to retreat for a while. So he's going to try and hit hard, hit fast, hopefully knock people out right away, and be done with it. Um, he did. He's researched fighters, and he's going to try. And he wants to be a fighter pilot too. He's going to try and get enough fighters going so that he can come and in, invade this area. That's kind of his short-term goal, and then just kind of keep keep working on attack and get his fighters going that way. Um, he's got the second-level military academy, so his fighters could get really good if they uh, continue to win battles. So he got uh, RP, which will up his research research points. So he's actually going to be pulling in 15 next turn. Um, just this next this next round of turn, he's going to be able to finish up filling up his infrastructure in terms of the MS pipelines. Got some scouts and then three carriers. Hasn't gotten any fighters yet, but he has the carriers to put them on. So that's good. Um, then Betty Crocker. Betty Crocker's trying to be a little more crafty with his moves. He, he, he already has cloaking technology, um, exploration. Some military academy better than anyone in tactics, but he doesn't know that. No one else has any tactics, so he'll always be going first. Um, but what he's working on is mines. So he's gonna pl his kind of plan is he's gonna take his make some cloaking ships after he, you know he's gonna keep building up here, and then when he's ready, he's gonna take some cloaking ships and start going over here, laying out mines throughout all these areas. Um, and then start attacking Sonny's infrastructure. And then if Sonny's gonna have a, a choice between like protecting what he has or um, staying here. And either way, kind of Betty Crocker has him, has some, some way of getting him. The only th problem could be that Sonny could just like outgun him. So um, I guess I could tell you more while we're talking about Betty Crocker's craftiness, but um, Say he's going to make use of decoys as well. So I think I've done enough talking. Oh well, he's got a, a variety of things. Started to w w focus on uh, boosting up his defense here as well. So he's got a 
He kind of was ignoring it, thinking Sonny wouldn't come in, and so far that's been true, but the situation could change, so he, he did have some extra money to put into that. Other than that, he's working on exploring, trying to keep a good enough fleet here to keep Sonny busy, and then after he gets my, uh, the ability to create mines, he's going to start sending those out with some cloaked raiders to cause some guerrilla trouble. So it might have been good if, or better, in hindsight, if Junior had left well enough alone. He, his scout that he sent out just uncovered a doomsday machine. Now doomsday machines are trouble. They, um, they're called that for a reason. Uh, however, he is fortunate that I am benevolent and playing by the rule that the doomsday machine will not go into a, a system with a colored back. Now, normally you ignore that for the random scenario setup, but I am not going to, uh, so it's not going to mess with these things, okay? We're going to consider that part of his home system, which is what the rules say. So i got to figure out where it's going to move. I, it's, I think it's, it moves after each player's turn, so that's going to be interesting. Towards the nearest thing, so it's going to be a white-backed thing. Oh, there's nothing even here, so... I don't know if that would be considered white or not. So it's going to move and it's going to start attacking things and causing trouble. Um, it might be interesting though, it might actually be going towards Betty Crocker. We'll see. It's, it's somewhat random. Fun little note, this danger marker actually came up first in the doomsday mission, so the danger destroyed the scout. Um, but we can just surmise that it, or guess that it was the doomsday machine that was the danger. And it got some sneak attack going on the scout, so it didn't even get a chance to defend itself. We're on the second turn now, and uh, with the first turn included, Sonny has discovered three black holes <laughs> in a row here. Um, the first black hole actually made his, his scout, because of my special house rule, uh, become the next level, whatever that is, V, I guess it's very, a veteran, a veteran scout. Um, so he thought about maybe not even having an explore again, but <coughs> he opted to have it explore this black hole, and its experience with black holes did not help it, and it died. But on the bright side, this scout here, Scout 5, successfully explored this black hole and did not die. So he still has a veteran scout. It appears as though our doomsday machine is not so doomy. It's just kind of wandering around behind, um, we'll say right, right or most wing of uh, Junior's Empire, just kind of bouncing around, going from space to space. It, it, it's, it's predicated on random movement until um, Junior uh, opens up more white spaces. Nice thing that could happen is the Doomsday Machine could get rid of aliens for him if he finds any uh, alien planets out there nearby. It, it has a range of two, and if, it, if there's nothing it can attack within a range of two, it just kind of moves a random space and then does nothing. So even if he ends up in a space with junior ships, as long as it's not a white system, the doomsday machine will do nothing. So uh, things are starting to heat up. People are moving towards their goals. Uh, lots of different uh, configurations. Right now I think Betty Crocker is maybe my favorite to win. Not that I like him better, but it um, seems like he has the best chances so far just in terms of the whole dynamic. But they're they're. They're very different positions, and I don't know the game well, so I can't really say. Uh, I couldn't really say anyway, probably, even if I knew the game well, but that's what makes it interesting, right? All right, we'll see you next time on the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. Peralta Leg 5, Space Empires 4.